happen that one day something's gonna go up my nose, right? So I was at the casino, which is attached to this place, and like I tried cocaine for the first time. I was like, oh shit, you know, it was crazy. And I got beat up by a group of teenagers that night, fucking. <laughs> My ex-wife and I were like, yo, we should get a divorce. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it was crazy. So now I do comedy because, you know, I'm still hurting from that shit. I'm just kidding. It's cool because, like, you look, when I get to do comedy, because I'm, I'm from West Palm, so we don't have that many, like, Hispanic people. But, like, you guys, you know, like, where are my people at? You guys Hispanic, right? <laughs> and, okay, so it's nice because when people tell you my name, you guys know you've met a Lalo before. Okay, when I meet other white people, like, what's Lalo stand for? It was like calling Richard Dick. It doesn't make any sense, you know? Like, I'm Hispanic, so Lalo is short for Jaime Eduardo Rodriguez Aristizabal Orozco Álvarez en Agua And they're like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, just fucking choose a name. Just call me Carlos. I'll answer that shit too, you know? It was crazy, because like when I came to the United States, like it was a disaster. Like For some reason, my parents decided it was a good idea to put every single one of my ancestors last name on my birth certificate. I went to the DMV to get my ID printed. The machine just kept going. It looked like a cheesecake factory when it was printing out of the fucking thing. And the lady looks at me and is like, you're gonna have to choose one of these names. I'm like, you fucking choose, because I don't know which one to go about, you fuck, you know? It's crazy. I did my first communion in the United States, and when the priest called me up to receive the body of Christ, he had the audacity to use my birth name. The whole church responded, amen. <laughs> I'm Eduardo Rodriguez Avisis Abel Orozco Alvarez and now Echeverri. Hell yeah, no Jew people in here. You guys ready for some Jew jokes or what? Let's go. Let's go. Okay, fuck. Alright, shit. This girl almost just threw up her fucking hand. I was like, calm down. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy. You come to the United States and like, you guys can relate with this. Like, your parents never learn how to speak English. Why? Because they have you translating everything for them. Nine years old, translating our American citizenship application. Dad, I don't speak English. Like, you see, you say, I don't speak English. I'm like, no, I just know how to say fuck you and shit and thank you very much. He's like, that's good enough. Translate the document. I'm like, okay. And the little questionnaire it asks you is like, did you come to this country with any contraband or explosives? I was like, genius. <laughs> Are you part of the Medellin cartel or any terrorist groups? I was like, Jesus. Do you promise to be a law body citizen of the United States of America and pay all your taxes? No. So I was undocumented for the following 18 years. I had to marry a white girl. That's a girl that like divorced me, whatever. Thank you. Hell oh, yeah, you guys know, yo, that shit's wild, look, I'm serious. To the rest of you white people, like, ugh, it's a fucking disaster when you're Hispanic, you don't know the language, like, I had to go through ESOL. <laughs> She's like, oh, fuck. Look, to the rest of, like, the, the few white people in here, like, look, ESOL, okay, ESOL is something in Hispanic, like, a lot of people that aren't from, it stands for English for Students of Other Languages, okay? To you guys that don't know what ESOL is, we're the kids that keep in the back of the school in the portables, okay? Yeah, with the ESC kids. So nobody knows what the fuck is going on. And nobody can communicate properly, okay? It's crazy. Look, Esau is typically like five Latinos, five Haitian kids, and then one random German kid. <laughs> Fucking Gunther was our German kid. And this kid could only say the number nine. Nine! Fuck! It's crazy. You know what's fucked up? There was no running water in the portables. Recreating childhood trauma, you know? And they had to, like, we had to wait till 10 o'clock to use the bathrooms in the fucking main building, okay? It was like coming to the United States all over again. We were like, fuck. We looked at the main building like the motherland. We were like, you know, if I ever make it out of here, I won't forget about you, Holmes. Every now and then, you get, like, some, like, brave white kid coming up to the fence with, like, granola and grapes. He's like, comida! And I'm like, thank you, senor. <laughs> It was crazy. <laughs> Fucking, you know, 10 o'clock, we were like, that was like my favorite time of the day, honestly. Because, like, I tried really hard to fit in, like, into my pants. But I swear how I wanted to fit in with the American people. Like, I couldn't wait to go fucking hang out in the main building, like, in the courtyard. Because we got to, like, hang out with the mingle with all the white kids. And you guys remember this shit? You have to walk all quiet in the line. 
You understand that 10 o'clock sun in the morning from the portables all the way to the main building, you're fucking sweating. Gunther's in the back of the line like, a nine, 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 fuck. And then you get to the main building, right? And that's like, that's where like, I was like, oh my God, this is America, this is so nice. You know? Saw fucking rolling book bags for the first time. I was like, oh fuck. I was going to school with my books in a fucking elbow that go in plastic bag, so. <laughs> I saw a rolly book, I'm like, shit, that's nice, you know, I had to get one of those. One of the Puerto Rican kids in my class had one. That motherfucker put a Puerto Rican flag on it, fucking rinse and shit. He walked to school and went, <laughs> And he would walk away, this fucking kid. Mauricio was his name. All you could say was, Ya tu sabes, that kid was fucking annoying. He had a hard part, just like the bartender. I don't, this, this guy's triggering me. So I was thinking. <laughs> so up until that moment, guys, like, I, I legitimately, like, I was like, I wanted, I just wanted to be in the main building, you know? Like, I came in this country in the wheel well of the airplane, now I gotta fucking, you know? And I saw the whitest thing I've ever seen up until that point, okay? There's a two white kids just playing around, right? This kid goes to tie a shoe and his friend, farted on the other kid's head. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I want to be American. Like, I thought that was it. Like, that's it. Like, if I fart on someone's head, I was like, you know, some white guy was gonna be like, welcome to the United States of America. <laughs> like, I just, you know, so I was like, all right, I'm gonna try that shit. I want to fart on like some kid's head. So I picked Mauricio. Mauricio was a kid. So I waited till the next day. Right? We're in the portables. Mauricio's doing his work. And I'm like, all right, here we go. You know, I go up next to Mauricio. I just started like letting it percolate, you know. Like, I, I just, I just wanted to blow a good one, you know. I was like, fucking. But here's like where I fucked up, cause I was still on the fresh off the boat diet. Okay, you guys know what I'm talking about. I was still eating rice and beans and fried steak <laughs> with a fucking egg on top for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that morning I was late, so my mom put in a third. And she's like, "You gotta go." I'm like, "Okay." So I was sitting there and I started letting it percolate, right? And I started doing this. The portable started shaking. The Haitian kids were like, "Oh, oh." So I. <laughs> You guys are fucked up, man. I think that shit, dude. Shit. I'm still sending money over there because I had jokes, but whatever. So, <laughs> all right, so, so I'm sitting here, and, and I, I pushed too hard. I shit my pants. That's what happened. So, but like, you know, like it was, it was traumatizing. I was wearing my dad's tidy whities You know, we're still falling on hard time. I didn't know what to do. You know, it just got trapped right there. And I was like, oh, fuck, you know, there was no cell phones back then. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't call my parents. I, the teacher didn't speak Spanish or English. I was just like, me cagué, I don't, <laughs> fuck. So I had to wait till they took us to the main building, you know, to like to clean myself up. And like, I knew we were broke. Like, this is how broke we were. I was so afraid of throwing the underwear away. <laughs> and I just scooped it out and I threw it in the toilet and I pulled my pants back up. And then, like, I, I think because of that, like, the trauma from that whole day, it, like, jump-started me speaking very good English. That's why I don't really have an accent. I was on the bus later on that afternoon. My forehead's all sweaty. I'm pressed up against the bus. And Lenny Kravitz had a hit song called Fly Away. I don't know if you guys are too young for that song, but it goes, I want to get away. I want to fly away. That's how it started off, right? I was on the bus, I swear to God, I was just like, fuck this shit, I'm gonna lean into everything I'm gonna do in life. And I was like, I want to get away. I was just like, I want to fly away. The whole bus was like, yeah. So then I come back to school the next day, and I'm like, fuck this, you know? I'm sitting in the portable, it's like, it's, as soon as like class starts, right? There's a loud knock on the portable door. The principal of the school opens the door and was like, can I see Jamie Eduardo Rodriguez Aristizabal Orozco Alvarez and now Echeverry? And I was like, Jess? <laughs> come with me. And I was like, what happened? And he's like, congratulations, you've graduated ESOL. Please come to the main building with me. Thank you guys so much. My name is Paula Rodriguez. Give it up for your awesome host, Amber.